In our last video, we talked about how metabotropic receptors work. In previous videos, we've discussed how ionotropic uh, receptors work. And what we're going to do in this uh, brief video is just contrast the two different types of uh, receptor proteins. Uh, one of the differences between the two is the speed at which um, the receptor is able to produce a change in the membrane potential. Ionotropic receptors are, are very fast compared to metabotropic receptors. The reason for that is that with the ionotropic receptor, when the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor, the receptor itself becomes an ion channel, allowing the ions to move through that channel and, and change the membrane potential. The metabotropic uh, receptor, on the other hand, um, has the neurotransmitter bind to it, which then activates a G protein, and in the case of the shortcut pathway, that G protein can then open an ion channel. So that's, that's relatively fast, but it's still slower than an ionotropic receptor. Um, the other way with the uh, enzyme cascade, or the, or the second messenger cascade, um, is, is much slower because it requires the transmitter to bind with the receptor to, and then to activate the G protein, which then affects whatever enzyme it will affect, and it may actually affect multiple enzymes. So if you're looking for a system for sending a fast message, ionotropic is a good way to go. On the other hand, if you're looking for a system that can change slowly over time to adjust to circumstances, uh, let's say, for example, um, hunger, or perhaps uh, the, the you know, slight changes in lighting that can occur um, as our day and night cycle changes uh, through the seasons, then a metabotropic receptor would be a better way to go for that. Another difference that we see in the um, different types of, of channels has to do with whether or not the signal is a specific signal or a widespread signal. And what I mean by that is the change in the membrane potential, just, just how, uh, how widespread is that on the uh, surface of the neuron. Ionotropic receptors open up in a specific spot and allow a, and allow a few ions to pass through to produce a very specific change in the membrane potential at that particular point. Um, just for example, if we have an ionotropic receptor out on a dendrite and a signal um, is sent from the presynaptic cell, well, when the neurotransmitter binds to that receptor, we're only going to get a little change in membrane potential out on the dendrite. It may be specific enough that we don't even see a change at the axon hillock and therefore possibly don't generate an action potential. Um, metabotropic receptors are quite different especially the ones that involve second messenger cascades. What happens there is you have a neurotransmitter bind to a receptor in a specific area, but then the activated G protein can cause widespread change in the metabolism or the chemical properties of that neuron, which can lead to changes in many different channels. Uh, finally, the, another difference is whether or not the receptor becomes a channel, as it does in the ionotropic receptors, or doesn't become a channel, as with the uh, metabotropic receptors, where a G protein has to be activated, and then, as a consequence of the uh, activation of that G protein, either directly or indirectly, um, ion channels will either open or close. Once again, let me emphasize that in the end, the effect is still relatively similar. There will be a change in the flow of ions, which will lead to a change in membrane potentials. In our next video, we will examine in more detail the effects of ion movements on the membrane potentials.